Hi, Elena Chamia here with Anita Di Francesco. This is Break the Silence, Explore Creative Ways to Freely Express Your Erotic Divine Feminine Nature. Um, I would like to start with a meditation. So Anita, if you can close your eyes and everyone in the audience, if you can close your eyes right now and just take a deep breath. Breathe in. About and I uh, just want uh, Anita and I to connect with all of our chakras and to serve everyone in the audience as well as ourselves to be able to deliver our message clearly and with a lot of love. And if you can just open your eyes. Hi, nice to connect with you today. Yes, very nice to connect with you. Um, Anita, if you could list, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I am the founder of Tantra Wisdom, which is a Facebook group, and of course my business, my website. I'm a modern sex and relationship coach, um, somatic psychotherapist, so really it's just one one field of work, the you know, mindfulness, sexuality, and relationships is my podcast. And I'm I'm just teaching and working with all those different fat elements in a human being, you know, mindfulness, the sexuality and relationships. And I don't think uh, they should be separated. I think the transformation to healing is a combination of them all, which of gets into the chakras. And um so I'm based in Philadelphia, um, 20 years in Los Angeles. I'm bi-coastal, but presently the last eight years in Philadelphia, where I was born. And um, here I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> great, great to have you. Um, I want us to explore your journey and also the journey with your clients a little bit um, on the topic of self-love. So if you want to expand upon that, both personally and, um, and if you want to include your clients. Okay. Self-love. You know, this is, there's so much value to self-love. And I really don't think our society or our world has really come to the evolution of self-love. Self-love is not just, well, I love myself. I'll buy myself things. I'll treat myself great. I'll make sure I get my needs met. But that really isn't self-love. Self-love involves non-selfishness to people. So when you really have this deep love for yourself, you let go of things such as judgment, jealousy, um, selfishness toward other people, hate. Now see, when there is a deep self-love, there is a form of the, the self that becomes transformed. And all you know is this love but you're able to really connect with people and see people and understand and see the love in them that hasn't even grown. So a lot of people have a confusion around what self-love is. Now for me, do you want me to tell you my experience, how I came to be that? Sure, yeah. yeah. When I was a little girl, I was sick and, and for a year I was in a hospital, Children's Heart Hospital in Philadelphia, I had rheumatic heart disease. And I didn't really have anyone to love. My parents couldn't visit me, but children were dying around me. And it was very tra traumatizing for me as a child, nine years old, to witness people being brought out in body bags. It was like a war in a sense. Yeah. And, and, and it was very painful, but at the same time, of course, when you're nine, you think you're the next one to go. Mm -hmm. And so I had to open my heart to my hospital mates. And another challenging, Thing that was going on at that time is I was the only white child amongst African-American children, which in 1966 was a very challenging time for us to communicate and be friends. So I really opened my heart. And to me, there was no such thing as prejudice, because I really feel that when you're prejudiced at, in, to any culture out there or anything, you don't have self-love. And what, what I learned at nine was that there was no prejudice. There was, there was only love. And I needed these people. And somehow as a child, you're creative. You don't have all that baggage going on. You don't have the, the ego built up and hardened as we do and armored when we become, you know, 30 years old or 40. So at that time, um, 
I reached out to them in a creative, spiritual way. And my life unfolded. And this is what I call an awakening. And I learned to love myself. I saved myself from dying because actually all the kids were dying. It was just the kind of disease that medicine wasn't advanced yet. Mm -hmm. So being a Tantra teacher and thinking and working with the heart chakra, it was my heart chakra that really wanted, it was calling out for love. But the love, I had to create it within first. I had to self-love myself so much. It, you know, it actually, it was very hard to do that then. And, but yet easy because as a child, you don't have all these other things on your plate. And, but it, for me, it just naturally happened. And I learned how to self-love. And this relationship I built with myself is one of the strongest relationships I have. So wherever I go, and whatever things I'm facing in life, this is what I look to. And no one could ever break that relationship. It is stronger than a relationship that I would have even with a man, a romance. So, and I honor it. And I'm so happy that I have that. It's really a gift. I'll have to say that it's really a gift. I teach that in my workshops, Tantra, and teaching people how, and a lot of people they still have to do the transformation and get to a point of really understanding what self-love is. It's not just loving yourself. It's a bigger picture. It's wisdom. And it has to do with letting go of hate because the body cannot open up to its own love if hate is living in there. Mm -hmm. So therefore you can have the hate in you, but then get into a relationship that could be mediocre or last for five years when you wanted it to last forever. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the things that we look at and teach people how to clear their energy of, of all of this and how to communicate better so that they understand what love is. And it's very hard in our world to really share love as hate and express hate as we do so freely. But love is, um, you know, and when I was growing up, I came from a family that was, there was domestic violence, mm -hmm. my, par my parents, and that's what probably made my heart go into shock and having to be hospitalized for a year. Maybe that was my own way of saying, I want to be away from this because mm -hmm. I want to I save what love is. But uh, I have to say that it was a gift. And so I don't look at my childhood as bad or my parents as bad or anything where they hurt me or abused them. And that way they didn't hurt me, but they abused each other. They abused me with their actions. Mm -hmm. Of course, those actions are abusive to a child. Right. But yeah, whether it, you know, whether the child is locked in a room listening or whatever it is, it's transference. Mm -hmm. And so the strong relationship, and that made me different to people. They couldn't figure me out, like more like I became a loner, but I was in such a relationship with myself that it was the only thing that ever mattered. <laughs> and that's what took me through life. So I don't consider myself to be a victim or a survivor. Because a survivor, when people use that terminology, to me it's really, you're hanging on still. Mm -hmm. I, I recreated, and that's what my book, Live Free, Recreate Your journey to a liberate life. So I recreated myself and I said, I'm going to rebuild myself. But I didn't do it like from an ego way or a mental way. I just creatively, spiritually did it with the tools and the gifts that God had, that gives us all. But if you have that awakening, you're probably able to find it or, right. you know, so, tap into it. And so that was my gift as we all have gifts. Yeah. Yes, that's beautiful. I think, uh, I know for me, this is one of the reasons I created this series. You know, we talked on the phone and, and, you know, I was, I was a victim of domestic violence and, um, you know, looking back on it, uh, you know, I, I wasn't a bystander. I, I was actually in, you know, in it. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't regret it anymore before I would, I would regret and blame myself, but I feel like, okay, that I went through that. But I like the word you used, re recreate, because, you know, when he passed away, um, I, you know, I consciously, you know, kind of came back to myself, you know, I recreated what should have been or whatever that means. But I, I basically, I came back to myself and, and I'm in the process.
process of, of really going through, really being in the throes of the self-love. But um, I, I do feel like uh, I, I'm just so peaceful, you know, that whatever happens, like you said, I think the strongest relationship is with yourself. And once, once you can really feel that, like really in your body, feel it, you know, in, in all your chakras, um, you know, nothing really phases you, you know, you just kind of flow. And, um, and you know, I, I, I'm not there yet, so I can only imagine, but I feel like I'm, I'm definitely on that path. And, um, and I you're think- taking, You're taking steps to get your power back. Reclaim right, exactly. Power. Exactly. Taking steps to, but not only your power, because power could be ego-ish, but more or less you're re um, reclaiming um, your spirit, you're cleansing, and you're, you're digging yourself out. Mm -hmm. right. and, and if you do it in that way, rather than ego and power, that will keep you still in pain. Mm -hmm. So you're, it sounds like you're really doing good work with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, a reason why I'm spending the time on this is because I think this is really the crux of the series. You know, it's really about healing. Um, you know, it's only through healing was I able to really tap into my desires. You know, was I able to, able to really say to myself, every dream I ever had can actually be a reality because the dream is my soul telling me, you know, this is what you want and it's all possible. You don't have to live a life like you lived. You know, once those structures kind of just melt away and you realize that life is infinite because I'm infinite, because we're all beings and anything is possible, you're right, hate doesn't seem to exist anymore because we're all humans. We're all going through this experience in our own way. And once you look at the world that way, I don't know, the rose colored glasses, I mean, if I was wearing them, okay, either they're more rosy or <laughs> I just see the life differently. It's either way you look at it, it's still dream, but <laughs> um, I have to say that that's, that's just been, that's been my awakening, you know, these last few months, um, nine months or so, or maybe even more, but uh, just to, to see, to, to really, let myself be me and accept myself for who I am and love myself completely and totally, no matter what happens, because I know the universe has my back and I'm a divine sacred being. And so are you. And so is everyone on this call and everyone outside. Um, and when you look at life that way, it's like a beautiful life, you know, like we have your really we have emotions and we go through things, but you know, that's the beauty of it all. You know, without, without the high, you won't have the low, you know, without the top of the mountain, you wouldn't have the valley. So now in Tantra, teaching people through Tantra about self-love, I'm also teaching people about consent, consenting. Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of communication about asking and respecting that not taking each other for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't realize that um, Tantra is really not, a religion it's not an orgy it's just really about self learning how to be self-respectful to yourself and to others and it's also learning how to have consent and communicate with your partner to ask for what it is that you want but my biggest thing is teaching people self-love and how to get in touch with those emotions that are suppressed and the emotions that are armored that live in their body and, and maybe they weren't able to express themselves as a child, or maybe they come from some type of trauma. And I've had many traumas after that. All of these are awakenings, but you know that one was when I was nine. And um, but I, I think that with the um, the tantra through self love, if you love yourself and you start to let go of the hate and everything inside, then you're able to love your partner more deeply. Mm. And, and these these are this is a road to <clears throat> excuse me a road to successful relationships because. Even, even if it's not the soulmate, you turn it into a soulmate. And a soulmate is a soulmate. We're all soulmates. So you can actually use Tantra exercises to have like with someone that can turn into love. And um, because you've learned to respect each other and communicate and you found love in yourself and you can just share that love with a very nice person that was once just a friend that can turn into romance. So really, this is what my biggest thing is in teaching my work, how to um, 
and I, I have, I feel like that's my, one of my real talents in it because of my experience of what I lived mm -hmm. and how I saw my parents fight. My parents were fighting. They were, they were in love with each other. So, but they had so much baggage that they didn't know how to, you know, back then in that, those times, there wasn't a, an avenue for them to an outlet, but had there been, or had they had the awareness to attract that in their lives, they had still been together. Mm -hmm. So that's how I um, see that, how important the communication is and the consent, pleasure through consent, without taking advantage of your partner, asking your partner, what is it that you want? What is it that you like? What can I do for you? And this is where you're using that self-love. That's the self-love of yeah. yourself. I think that's a good point, you know, like giving your partner pleasure and, and asking them or giving them the space to feel comfortable to tell you, um, you know, the communication, I, I agree with you. I think it's really, really an important piece uh, when two people are together because I think that heightens the, um, the intimacy between them. Yes, yes. Wonderful. It does, definitely. And it, it lets them accept themselves more. So people think that Tantra is whatever. You don't even have to call it Tantra. It's mm -hmm. just a way of us educators out there wanting to reach out to the world to bring more love to the planet and to bring more love in the children coming up because children grow up with hate. Right. And uh, it's just wonderful. And all around the world, too. There's so much going on, you know. <laughs> it's funny. I was just talking to someone recently uh, today in a, in a difficult country. And, you know, I remember there was a lot of political issues in this particular country. And so I asked her, so what's going on? She's like, well, I don't really know. <laughs> I was like, great, because I don't watch the news either. <laughs> I mean, I'm not to say that nothing, I don't know anything. But I try to keep my world pretty... Um, um, clear because if you if I take in too much negative energy you know like a lot of the news sometimes it's about things that you know that somebody died or whatever you know and sometimes that that hurts me I'm sensitive so it hurts my feelings and then I, I took to think about it you know and and so unfortunately you know this that's just the way I've learned to deal with the situations is this, as much as I can handle it comes inside my my world and then everything else, I let itself work it out because I, you know, I can't take out for everyone's problems. Right, right. It's interesting, yeah. What else do you want me to talk about within time or self-love or what else can we do? Um, well, I, w I wanted to kind of um, maybe even discuss, uh, I, have you written one book or more than one book? I did, I wrote one book. It's called Live Free. Mm -hmm. um, your journey to a liber recreate and recreate your journey to a liberated life. Mm -hmm. um, I first started out in the womb uh, when I was uh, in my mother's womb. It wasn't that that's that was the first awakening where my mother was unsure if I was my father's child. And so they wanted to have an abortion just oh, because God. they were having a separation at that time in their lives. It wasn't like they were cheating. Ha ha, no, just kidding. But <laughs> they had an issue. And so they went out and found love somewhere else. <laughs> and a baby came along. So my parents were unsure, but the abortion never happened because it was just a thing that was illegal at the time. And also it was kind of late at the time. So my mother just went ahead, but she tried to... I love my mother dearly, but she tried to get rid of me by putting poisons and stuff in her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they did back then. That's yeah. what the women did when okay. because it was illegal in the United States in right. the 50s. Oops, mm -hmm. now you know my age. Um, <laughs> so, I'm joking. I have no problems with my age at all. But the thing is, uh, then after that, my mother had me. She gave me birth, and I felt... I felt like in, in a spiritual way, that was like a gift and celebration. And then when I became nine, I got sick. And then when I left the hospital after that heart, heart hospital stay, a girl died in my arms at the very end of the hospital stay. And I went into her room to say goodbye to her. And I knew that life was a gift. Because I said, like I said, a lot of the kids were dying in body bags. I happen to have been one of the lucky ones to live. And, and a few others, but most of them died then. 
It was very sad. Boy, what a, what a, when I think about that, I think about those kids and how much I love them and how that love never really got expressed in the world because they were so young and helpless mm -hmm. and there wasn't any medicine to help them. Mm -hmm. When I went to little Julia's room and held her in my arms, I won't forget her name, she's in my book, Julia, and uh, she died right there and my father was standing there and I just thought that it was interesting that her parents at the time sort of looked at me with envy like as if you're living and my daughter isn't wow. and that was a real diff it was something that i really was very wise to pick up on these little kind of things not it was just a feeling i picked up on and i thought to myself hmm and, and 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 it hurt me so badly you know because this is, these aren't things that are in our control. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went on to live life and all the children at school, you know, they thought I was a little different. And then I had other experiences, traumatic things like, uh, you know, rape uh, over when I became 30, a date rape kind of thing from a few, few different men. And that was very, um, another awakening call for me to uh, just continue on my path of teaching people about love. So Tantra came in where like people thought, well, hey, she wants to be in sex and Tantra, but really Tantra to me is love. Mm -hmm. That was my path. But Tantra, well, what is sex? Are you going to do sex or are you going to do love? I, when I do sex, I want it to be love. When I do sex, I want it to be love. Mm -hmm. And really, I'm a true Tantra person that way. I don't really like to make love to a man unless we have a loving connection. Mm -hmm. and in our day and age with the sexual revolution, you know, we, we had other opportunities. And, but then that felt, that's falling through in the world because people have issues now. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stay married. <laughs> so, so Moving along that track, um, all these different experiences, and that led me into a dark side of my life, you know, at, at one point I went into a dark side, but then I had to recover and come out of that and um, still staying on my path though, because the only person that was with me again was my inner child, more than the inner child, the relationship that I built with myself. I felt like I was two people all the time. I always had this other person going along with me. That's how strong it was. Mm. So I teach people how to do that. Uh, build a little altar in your house and put your baby picture there. Or not a baby, but like a little girl mm -hmm. or boy. And to honor that and say different things every day and start to talk to that. And then we do a, an inner child work that helps them to reconnect and go back to that time, but be the adult child. Be the adult and then the child. Mm -hmm. And to take that child by the hands and start to let it grow with you so as if you're taking the child and it's growing with you wow. and yeah and now and then you become the same height at some point in life but that person is still the little the little child and you're still the big one mm -hmm. but you're like the same height and you're living in the same world so this is the kind of vision i create for them to help themselves i've helped a lot of people get get going in that way of life they love that inner child stuff yeah, that's, that's very fascinating because I think like the times when I'm the most free and adventurous is like, I feel like that's my inner child, you know, like I'm just spontaneous, I, I have no cares, you know, I'm just very, you know, free, you know, like, you know, just right, right. And, and then I get back into my, you know, I'm the mom now, <laughs> I have to play the mom, but um as as much as I can live in that world of spontaneity and freedom, it it only it only helps me to become like a better person, like a better, more loving mother and person in the world. So I like that. I just like that beautiful analogy you gave, and uh, I'd recommend anybody to go and and work with you. I mean, that just sounds amazing to to even well, experience that. Opening up your Feel your heart to your own feelings is mm -hmm. what I want to say is opening up your heart to your own feelings So people think they have to open their heart to other people's feelings But you want to open your heart to your own feelings and when you do that that is rich You are rich and that is your riches. So when you open your heart to your own feelings That is when you can start to see other people when the way I see people's feelings 
is I really see their feelings. I really see them. And I really honor them. I am really authentic that way. I, I keep my karma really, I have respect for people's feelings. It's just, you know, whether you don't like them or not, you know, it's having respect for the feelings because there's things about every person you're not going to like, but their feelings is where the love is. Right. The love of the human nature, human mankind, mm -hmm. the human condition. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where it is. But you don't have to like that person. You may not like things they do in their life or things they do to you, but still maintain that love. So if people can draw that line there, it's like a thin line that you can not like everyone, but keep the human, keep the human condition love there then you're going to be balanced because the whole world, that's what it's about. Okay. It's, you know, dynamic and subtle. It's up, it's down. But if you can maintain that and whatever's going on around you, like even in our world of politics, there's a lot of things people don't like about our administration. Are you now they're becoming more hateful. They're, they're actually creating hate in their bodies, mm -hmm. but I don't do that whether I like or not. I still maintain the love because they are a person that has feelings. Yes. You are a person that has feelings. Oh, that's, that's, I love that. Yeah, I love that too. That's a, if, you, if you don't remember anything from this interview, you're a person that has feelings and you honor that. I think that's great. That's a great quote. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, that's, it's just been, uh, we're, we're almost at a close, but um, that's it's just been an amazing time talking to you. I, I want to try to wrap it up and you know kind of go over some of the highlights of the of the interview. Um, uh, well, we really talked about self love and and Anita's own personal experience um, when she was young, when she was nine in the hospital, and and how how that really changed her and how she took that with her her entire life. This this and I I really. Uh, commend you for for starting at that age you know i know you had to but um that's a great way to stay alive i mean i feel like that's now the only way to stay really alive is to love yourself because you know you're not really sh no one knows really what's going to happen in their life but if they have a strong sense of self and they really do love and accept themselves nothing can really you know i mean i'm sure you had your lows in your life as well but um you know, it's, I know from, from being that victim, you know, in that victim state and, and now being in this state, I feel like everything that happens to me, I can just shift it. You know, there's ways I can shift that energy and, and feel better, like in a much shorter time frames. So um, I, it's so amazing that that, that happened to you, uh, you know, and you were able to, to get up and, and and you know, really be in your in your power at that young age. Um, we talked about tantra and, and what she does uh, with uh, with people in relationships and how she uses uh, self love and and for them to help in terms of their intimacy in terms of really consent you know talking and and getting consent for for things that will that are going to happen as well as asking you know what is it that you like to do and what what is it that you want. And I think that's really that's really important in terms of um, building deeper intimacy between two people um, in in, a, in sense sexual loving relationships, and um, and then we talk about you know really honoring your feelings you know and that people everyone has feelings and to be honest about that and, and to really see that in everyone no matter if you like them or not you know how we just said I think that that was just really beautiful. Um, if you'd like to add anything, Anita, as well as tell them about their free gift, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be more than happy. No, just to internalize that space within, and that's where your home is. It's this internal space. Once you internalize that, the innateness, you, you find that other home that lives within your body temple, but you have to really keep going back to it to keep it clean, clear, and love. So it's all about you know, again, that thin line between doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to like everyone, but you can certainly still love them. And that's really all I have to say today is that all feelings matter. And if people want to get in touch with me, tantrawisdom.com is my website. 
I have a Facebook group, which is a public group. Anyone can join it, Tantra Wisdom. And I also have a business page uh, on Facebook, Tantra Wisdom, and Modern Sex and Relationship Coach public page on Facebook. So you can find me somewhere. I'm there. <laughs> and I'm located in Philadelphia. And I want to thank you, G Gilda? Gila. 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 Gila, I want to thank you so much for having me on. I know you're way across the world right now in Israel, and I'm here in Philadelphia, but we're making that connection. <laughs> yeah. It was a pleasure to have you. It's been it's been great connecting with you, and um, I just uh, I, I just want to say that I'm just grateful for all the audience being there, and just um, I'm sure we'll connect again. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste.